Only four light years away from our own solar system, Proxima b is one of the planets in the system that has been sending out some really unusual signals which astronomers have been able to decipher. The brightest minds in the field of space are racking their brains to determine what these peculiar phenomena are and whether or not they indicate the presence of sentient beings elsewhere in the universe. The unusual phenomena had been dubbed artificial lights. The concept has a grain of truth to it. Near the end of 2020, it was found that our nearest neighboring star, Proxima Centauri, commonly known as BLC-1, was broadcasting a signal. We should look into the planets near Centaurus to see if there is evidence of civilization on those worlds, even if we are still investigating the signal to make sure it is not just an echo of our own civilization. This holds true even if further analysis of the signal is being conducted. Unfortunately, the current generation of telescopic telescopes cannot pick up the faint light emitted into space by Earth's night side. It's because the illumination is so meager. Planet Proxima Centauri b, which lies in the habitable zone and circles the nearest star, may have artificial lights detectable by our technology if it's advanced or glowy enough. Even if this is not the case, there is still a possibility that we will be able to identify man-made illuminations on Earth. Whether or not non-human civilizations will be able to view the lights on Proxima Centauri b will be one of the concerns explored in our recent study that looked at the detectability of technology signatures at Alpha Centauri. The new research also suggests launching the multi-wavelength space-based observatory Lavoie in 2035. Lavoie is also known as the huge UV optical IR surveyor. This observatory has the potential to do spectral surveys of the cosmos. Evidence of cultural items left behind on the planets chosen by an advanced civilization could reveal its existence. The presence or absence of technologically advanced civilizations on a planet can be determined in a number of distinct ways. As an example, we could be able to see the light of a distant world jiggle with the help of a vast constellation of satellites like the one you're familiar with. Light from stars and other heavenly bodies is completely unique. Eliza Tabor and Avi Loeb, two researchers, did an online test drive to look for alien lights a year ago. Since the virtual JWST isn't completely working at this time, the results were not particularly reliable. One complete revolution around Proxima Centauri takes about 11.2 days, or about 5% of the distance, that Earth goes around the Sun. Its mass is 1.6 times that of Earth while its diameter is 1.3 times that of our own planet. 100% would imply that the night side of Earth is as brilliant as the day side, which is not the case, while 0% would imply that the night side of Earth is utterly dark. This is because the amount of artificial illumination is just slightly greater than the amount of sunlight reflected off Earth's day side. According to Tabor and Loeb's calculations, the amount of sunlight reflected from Earth's day side is roughly similar to the amount of artificial light. If the artificial night side illumination of Proxima b reaches 5%, Webb will have an 85% chance of detecting the artificial light. If it reaches 9%, Webb will have a 95% chance of recognizing artificial light. The 5% increase in brightness doesn't seem like much, even though our sun is only a tiny fraction as luminous as the brightest stars in the galaxy, its light is nevertheless noticeable when compared to the darkness of interstellar space. The amount of light from our sun is still quite large, despite the fact that it is only around 20 times as brilliant as the star Proxima Centauri. If there were another advanced civilization out there, it would be hard to find it online until its lights were at least 500 times brighter than ours. You can't call this an implausible turn of events by any stretch of the imagination. Since Proxima b orbits so near to its host star, it is possible that the planet is tidally locked, with one side of the planet always facing the star, and the other side eternally in eternal light. This would make one side of Earth permanently illuminated while the other remained in darkness. A culture that has evolved on a tidally locked planet is probably going to put a lot of thought into its lighting system. If this advanced culture used very reflective orbital mirrors to shine sunlight onto the planet's dark side, our telescopes would be able to see it. This civilization has the potential to create such technologies. However, this is currently just speculation.
This study, which was released only a few days after the researchers reported their findings, illustrates that future telescopes like Lavoie or the enormous UV optical infrared surveyor might identify a civilization's light even more swiftly than the James Webb Space Telescope. To further comprehend how these telescopes may identify city lights on Proxima b and other worlds circling stars up to 30 parsecs away, Thomas Betty of the University of Tucson's Department of Astronomy analyzed both Lavoie and Habex, which is an acronym for the Habitable Exoplanet Observatory. The average proton cloud has a length of around 3.26 light years. In 2035, when these probes began cataloging and directly photographing exoplanets, neither the Lavoie nor the Habex probes would have yet embarked on their missions to begin exploring the cosmos. On several different star systems, Beatty used the Lavoir and Havoc virtual observatories. Known planets like Proxima b and potential Earth-like worlds around G through K and M-class stars could be found in some of these star systems. Aside that, calculating how far away cities were from one another, Beatty also calculated what proportion of the planet's surface was actually covered by urban areas. The night side of a planet will appear brighter when there is a higher concentration of urbanization on the planet's surface. This model replicates the artificial illumination given by high-pressure sodium streetlights, the most common type of lighting found on the streets of our home planet. These official lights reflect off of concrete surfaces and have an infrared spectrum that is distinct from that of the night sky. Perhaps we could have a clearer picture of an ancient culture if we had a higher rate of urbanization, say 100%. Conversely, what does it entail for urbanization to cover the entire planet? You are looking at an example of a type of planet called a ecumenopolis, which consists of a single metropolis covering the entire planet. Novel use of modern tools in the style of classic science fiction, it's not simply a fantastical idea. A future technology evolved civilization might be able to encase the Earth in an endless metropolis. The question that needs to be answered is whether or not future observatories will be able to spot that world once it has been modeled and located. For now, finding Proxima b is most important because her research indicates that urban worlds are most likely to be orbiting close by red dwarf stars. Her findings will make it much easier for future telescopes to locate a city like Acumenopolis, which is in the Proxima b equivalent. This is due to the fact that her findings show that red dwarf stars in close proximity offer the highest chance. To put this in perspective, even though we were only able to detect 0.5% of global urbanization, this is still 10 times more urbanization than there is on Earth at present. Nonetheless, the world is only 0.5% away from meeting the barrier if we look at current city development rates.